Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're gonna talk about the animation industry, Warner Brothers Discovery, purging animation and how uh, people working in the animation industry say they can't trust Warner anymore. So this is gonna be really interesting because for decades, Warner was kind of the place to go. They had Cartoon Network yeah. and, and Adult Swim and uh, they were doing originals on HBO Max. Now the animation industry has turned against Warner. Well, good but, luck. Good luck with this. Um, so before we get into it any further, Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Finally over 275,000 subs. Thank you for the support. If you're a fan of animation or a fan of comic books, check out Crimson Ren Volume 1 now on Indiegogo. Over $35,000 and we've got Yay. 25 days left. So we're doing pretty good. Beautiful art by uh, Jose Garcia, who has worked in the animation industry. Um, look at that, it looks like a cartoon. Look at that, it looks like a cartoon. So let's, um, let's talk about this. This is actually the end of a rap article, and I'm gonna lead with the end of the article because it's actually very important because where are animators gonna go from here? Mm -hmm. uh, there clearly is no long-term multi-season career in animation anymore, uh, not just at Warner Brothers, but anywhere. None of these streamers will commit to picking up more than one season of a show at a time, which is not how animation works. One showrunner said, animation is a long-term investment. You can't just pop in and pop out and think you're gonna get good quality. They don't care about good quality. No. Uh, they care about views. They care about return on investment. Good news is if you have a self-contained story that could be done in one season, you know, they might pick you up. Well, also, you how long is a season? I mean, is this like a, a Netflix season or is this like a season by most everybody else's standard? Like a regular season? Or are we talking like, yeah, Netflix is uh, six episodes or 10 episodes or whatever. Remember when seasons used Five, to be, yeah. they used to be like 26 episodes, yeah. 52 episodes, 65 episodes, yeah. That, that doesn't happen anymore. But yeah, so this is, has changed everything. Again, it's not just uh, Warner Brothers, Netflix too, mm -hmm. cut back on a bunch of shows, but they're also greenlighting other shows. And I think what they're doing is they're looking at these series and they're like, are we going to get a return on this investment? Right. You know, are we going to get the watch time we want? Are we going to get the subscribers? Are people going to subscribe for these shows? Uh, yes or no. And uh, quality at the end of the day, it doesn't really have a lot to do with it. But uh, yeah, multiple well, articles. It doesn't the fact that they want to see numbers. They're not going to renew it if it doesn't do well. No, and it doesn't matter how good it is. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, good is subjective. It doesn't matter how good it is. It has to resonate with the audience and translate into either more watch time or translate into merchandise sales. And a lot of the stuff that they, they canceled, Infinity Train and some other things, they're not really shows that merch well. Mm -mm. You know, what keeps a lot of these cartoons on the air as much as Twitter hates it is the merchandise, the cartoons. Right. You well, know? we go to the toy aisle at Walmart and there was like Coco Melon, Bluey, yeah. Gabby's, was it Playhouse or Gabby's whatever, Playhouse. Whatever it, it yeah. is. Gabby something. You I, know, that's what that's what the toy shelves are lined with. Yeah, and, and I mean, it really hasn't changed that much from the 1980s and 90s when a lot of cartoon shows were designed to prop up, you know, toy mm -hmm. lines or oh. card game lines or How video games. How dare you? Remember How like a few you? years ago when people were like, not even a few years ago, it's like two or three years ago when they're like, well, our reboots are fine, are better because they weren't just made to sell toys. But if your show had been made to sell toys and merchandise, you might still have a show. So before we, we get into this, uh, this latest article, this is an article yesterday or the okay. day before in The Wrap where they basically said that the... The uh, tentpole franchise, the litmus test now for HBO Max is uh, House of the Dragon, Game of Thrones. Okay. So they expect all of these originals to be like close to on par with Game of Thrones, which very few things are. And they pointed out that these shows, frankly, weren't that popular. They said none of the series being cut came close to that level of demand that would well, make them a Of course they're not. Temple. No. I mean, it's based on, you know, the show they had on HBO for years. I mean, that's not really a fair litmus test if you're comparing it to animation. You're not going to mostly bring that kind of, of stuff with animation like that. Uh, the most in demand of the cut shows in July was Cartoon Network's Infinity Train, which I've said before, because there are people on here that I swear to God, they don't actually They don't listen videos. to anything we say. I have said before, Infinity Train is actually a good show. We said that many shame. times. It got, they, yeah, they don't care. They don't care. You said that, you didn't like She-Ra. That means you hate that everything. That requires listening. And even with the She-Ra, if you actually watch the videos, I did find some nice things to say about it as well. But that would require watching the videos. 
Yeah, so um, this set had 5.9 times the demand of the average series, a solid performance, but not a broad enough appeal outside of its core fan base to make it central to HBO Max's offering. There are 148 other shows that had higher demand than Infinity Train in July. That's a lot of content for subscribers to sift through before getting to Infinity Train. So cartoons, by their very nature, uh, eliminate some of your potential audience. Some people just will not watch cartoons mm -hmm. for whatever reason, even if they're kids, are, are teens, they don't watch cartoons because it's kid stuff. Now, when you have a show like Infinity Train that is supposedly a kid's show, but it's actually designed for a more young adult audience, then that actually filters out a lot more people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's very niche and cartoons are very expensive. So that's why they made the decision they made to cut these shows. But the problem is they didn't just cancel the shows. They basically wiped them from existence. Yeah, at least with Infinity Train. Did they do it with the other ones too? Uh, I don't think the other ones got scrubbed as hard. Yeah, um, that was weird. It sounds bad. It but, does sound bad, but it's our channel, so. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's a very uh, interesting situation. Uh, you know, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, I think the showrunners were completely caught off guard, and I think that's what hurt more. It wasn't like, hey, we're canceling your show. Hey, we're going to take your show off the platform. It was, hey, we're going to just yank it off the platform, uh, never mention it on our websites or social media. Nothing. The show is just gone, gone, and you can't get a straight answer from anyone. And that is what is undermining the trust. I think if, if you know, the suits came to you and said, look, this is what we're going to do. This is why we got to do it. And mm -hmm. they gave you the heads up. I think it would be a totally different story. But I mean, at this point, Zaslav is just like freaking cutting everything that doesn't perform. Um, so this was today and this is what kicked off the video. Uh, animators voice deep distrust of Warner Brothers Discovery after latest H HBO Max purge. Uh, the showrunners and agents say companies' efforts to reduce debt are harming relationships with talent. Uh, Ian Jones Cordy uh, is used to seeing fan art and TikTok videos of OKKO. OK he found out something far more sobering from his fans. The show was one of three dozen titles, so he didn't even know his fans had to tell him. One of three dozen titles that Warner Brothers Discovery had pulled from HBO Max. See, that's what I don't think is right, is when they don't tell the people that are working on the show. I always get so mad about that. It's like, you know, okay, you're going to pull it, okay, whatever. But you can at least tell the people that are on the show and the creators and people that are in charge that it's getting pulled. It's like it's like finding out you're fired from somebody else. Which happens often. It I does never, happen. I never agree with that. I think that that's cowardly and shitty. Uh, it was a real shock for me, he said, but I think even more for the fans. Uh, the show finished on television three years ago, but more people were slowly finding it through HBO Max. Uh, it was becoming a cult show. That's actually true. HBO Max, at first, they were pushing for animation fans. I mean, they sent us a, a box for Close Enough, mm -hmm. uh, and I think they came to our channel because, you know, we cover animation. And uh, they really were trying to court animation fans, but that was under a different regime. And, uh, you know, these people are, are not happy. I wouldn't be happy. Uh, many talent agents said that Warner Brothers pushed to trim $3 billion in cost uh, risks long-term damage to relationships with creative talent. The entire company is coming off as distressed. Uh, the messaging both inside the company and externally is stay away or get out if you can. One storyboarder on a just-canceled HBO Max series said animators have a deep distrust of Warner Brothers right now. If I'm a showrunner... Yeah, I don't blame them. Yeah. Though. I don't blame them either. If I'm a showrunner and had this happen to my project, why would I work with that studio That's again? a good question. It's it's a, a, if I could help it. See, there's, that's the caveat. If I could help it. Um, it's a business. We get it. But the way this, uh, the way all this works uh, just got thrown away in the blink of an eye just feels so callous. I agree. I think that it was done in a really, really poor way. Um, and here's the thing. I mean, you can't all be like Vivzy Pop who – basically did it herself and then got a deal on her own terms. I mean, for the longest time, Cartoon Network, Cartoon Network, Nick, and Disney were the only games in town. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're never going to get the audience, you know, I mean, you'd have to come up with, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to bankroll your own thing. So, of course, you know, they, they go to these studios uh, to work because most people don't have that kind of cash. If you do, more power to you. Uh, the majority of titles in the latest round of cuts were family programming geared at kids and several Cartoon Network shows. Um, the animation retreat had come with major backlash. In the days following the cut, several showrunners decried the move. Infinity Train creator Owen Dennis called the cancellation incredibly unprofessional, rude, and straight-up slime, slimy. It is. It was done in a really bad way. Uh, Julia Pott, creator of Summer Camp Island, lamented that animators had worked through the pandemic. Okay, so this too, this is another, this is an extra layer of ouch. 
Yeah. Because we did videos on this where everybody was like, we're going to do more animation now because we were in lockdown, but animators can still work. But what's funny though, was when they announced all this stuff, it was towards the end of lockdown. So I thought that was kind of weird. I'm like, why are you doing this now when people are going back to work? And now we're seeing like, you know, since it happened, they're shutting these down. Yeah, it's almost like it's almost like you were you were Christmas help, right? Yeah, like your seasonal employee. Your seasonal employee. Like, yep, yep, okay, it's uh December twenty sixth, get the hell out of here. And now I wanna say too, <laughs> yeah, we, I, they, this one thing though, they let animators work through the pandemic. At least you got to keep the one thing I will say, at least you got to keep a job in the pandemic. There was a lot of people who wanted to go to work, couldn't go to work, and then they had no money. So working through the pandemic was actually something that was probably a gift at the time. I mean, yeah, I get what you're saying now. You like, you know, kick us to the curb now. But, you know, a lot of people wanted to work and they couldn't work. So they're acting like that was like a, I had to actually work. You know, that's the only thing I, I will say about yeah. that sentence. I think it's kind of crap. But yeah. I do, I don't disagree with the way that it was handled being terrible. Yeah, so I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see what the damage is, and it's it's really across the board because you know Disney. It doesn't seem like they're greenlighting nearly as many animated series as they were before. They canceled uh, Owl House and and some other stuff, and um, it's expensive. I mean, that's the problem. They're they're clamoring for uh, as much content as they can shit out on these streaming services, and they have to flip it quick. They can't wait. Like, okay, well, in two years, when the first season's done. You know, it's got to be like, okay, in six months when we have a something we can throw up on that streaming platform that a lot of people are going to watch. And I think they're just looking at, like, it's expensive, it's time-consuming. And it's not bringing the views in. And it's not bringing the views in. Why are we doing it? Unless you're selling a shit ton of toys, you know, why are we why are we doing this? Um, they said the actual choice of which shows got axed, the insiders say, was based on data from the company's accounting department. Being counters. Yep, on how much money can be saved from writer and actor residuals. Now, this is kind of important because the word on the street is they're doing the same thing to DC Comics right now. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to say, they did say that the Animation Guild did get the money because they said residuals a lot of times go to the Animation Guild to pay for things like, yeah. you know, health care or whatever. But they got their money. So they said that that the people who aren't getting their money are the, the people that, um, like the voice actors and things, because they usually get... Uh, you know, residuals based mm. on that, which is why a lot of shows get a voice actor and one of the creators does a voice or something so they can keep getting money. Right, Okay. Right. And then they said, though, what they're pushing for now is they want the, the people to be able to use their canceled projects in their portfolios to get more work. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, I think they should be allowed to. I think they should be allowed to, if, too. It's, it's canceled. Even if it wasn't canceled, you should be allowed to have that and say, I worked on this. Here's some examples. Yeah. I mean, that should be a given. Yeah, they said many of the popular shows are still available to buy, um, but they said the ongoing trend of directors, actors, and showrunners finding out about abrupt changes to how their work is handled and made public uh, and made publicly available has talent worried about a new normal. That's it. People are finding yeah. out their shows are canceled. We've heard voice actors getting told that they weren't working on a project that they've been on for years. Scoob. Okay, so Scoob, not not Scoob Two, the one that was canceled, but uh, Matthew Lillard found out that he wasn't going to voice Shaggy anymore. From the press release for Scoob, they're like, oh, here's the all new voice cast. And he's like, wow, that's news to me. It wasn't been... the Animaniacs guy, too. He wasn't told. Yeah, he wasn't told. He right. was involved. And, and yeah. we've called both of those incidences out and said that that was absolute bullshit. And I would agree the same here. I mean, you need to let these people know that's just the, the right thing to do. And it's not doing you any favors to just be like a, a shitty, slimy asshole and not tell anybody. Yeah, and it's so weird. I mean, we're talking within two years. Uh, you know, Hollywood has done a 180 on animation. It was like, let's let's do as much animation as possible to, oh shit, this doesn't pay. But then again, you know, the projects they've been green lighting, some of them, eh, you yeah. know, it's kind of spray or pray. That's you know? true, but I'm just saying it's it's like, you, you would have a lot more uh, support. Uh, people are still gonna be upset, but if you at least were up front and you at least talked to people and said, hey, we're gonna have to, do, to get stop doing the show because X, Y, Z thing. People would probably be a little bit better about it, but they're not even giving them the, that, the courtesy. You know, it's like being broken up with on a text or, you know. Uh, yeah. That, they didn't even get that far. They got, yeah. You found on TV your boyfriend's dating somebody else, you know, that kind of thing. That's pretty much it. And, you know, a lot of it, too, I think, is is the uh, shuffle at the top. Like, I don't even think, I mean, they're, they're not wrong in the fact that I don't think Warner Brothers even knows what the hell is going on these mm -hmm. days. So... Anyway, we're going to wrap this one up. Yeah. That's where things are at right now. Uh, good luck trying to get some of these people back. <laughs> yeah. If there's no, if, well, 
if yeah, there's another option. But what I was saying, if there is another option, they'll come back if there's money and get, get a better contract. Better contract. I, I for think sure. most because where else are you gonna go unless you do your own thing? And most people don't have the 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 clout, the know-how, or the ambition to do their own thing because it's not easy. It's hard. It is hard. Speaking of our own thing, <laughs> check it out. Indiegogo, yeah. Crimson Wren, Volume One. We'll talk to you later. Bye.